again, the Ramayana, both of them uh, fundamentally are avatar stories. They tell of the descents, two of the descents of Vishnu to earth and the great deeds of, uh, of Vishnu in his avatar as Ram and then in the Mahabharata in his avatar as Krishna. I mean, we will, again, in uh, a future course, we look at these texts, these epics, in, in more detail. But just briefly, I would say that they, they, they function on two levels. Both of them, by the stories they tell, give instruction about the nature of dharma. And here I'm defining dharma as being the right way to live. They show us real-life situations of people who are not that different to, to, to you and I and the way that they confront that, 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 that situation. In a sense, they, they encapsulate the idea found in the Kata Upanishad of the Shreyas and the Prayas. The Shreyas is what it is right to do. The Prayas is what it is pleasing to do. And we always we face the, the, this tension throughout life. Should we do what's nice or should we do what's right? And, 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 and um, repeatedly it shows, particularly in the Ramayan, Ram always chooses to do the Shreyas, what is right, and rejects the prayers. Uh, I mean, the obvious example is when he's um, exiled by his father Dasarat. He has a choice there. He can just say, uh, he, in fact, his father says, put me in prison. Don't, don't listen to my instruction. But Ram won't do that. It's pleasing. He doesn't want to go and live in the forest. It's cold. It's wet. He has to wear tree bark and live in caves and he doesn't get nice food to eat. Um, Whereas if he lives in the palace, he's got everything a human being could possibly want. So it, it, that, that's definitely prayas. That's pleasing, living in a palace. But he doesn't do it. He does the shreyas. He goes and lives in the forest simply because it's the right thing to do. And I think uh, by showing us the, the, that dilemma and, 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 and leading us through it, it, it gives a very, very powerful teaching about the nature of dharma. The Mahabharata gives similar lessons, but it's a lot more subtle. I think that the Ramayana is very much in the sense of black and white this is good this is bad the Mahabharata is uh, a very clever book and it shows us that uh, this is sometimes right but then again maybe it's wrong you know there's a story about uh, t always telling the truth we all know that telling the truth is right but the Mahabharata will show us circumstances when telling the truth can be very very wicked so it's, it's a subtle book and, and it repeats the phrase many times Dharma Dharma Sukshmo Shuksmosti, Dharma is very subtle and you have to trace your course through and we'll look at that in, in, in more detail later on. Uh, alongside that of course they are devotional uh, avatar stories so that devotees of Vishnu, devotees of Ram, devotees of Krishna will read those stories and um, find devotional inspiration from the activities of Krishna and Ram particularly the, the Vaishnavas because these are manifestations of, of Vishnu Okay, other scriptures. Um, we have also a body of works, which I think, I'm not sure if we've got any um, here. I'm sure they are here, but we'd have to get the librarian to find them for us. Um, but they, these are called Dharma Shastras, and they are, they are there, are they? Okay, I'm sure they were. The Dharma Shastras give us um, very strict rules about the way society should be structured. They talk about caste, they talk about government, they talk about the conduct of life. They talk about how a Brahmin should live. They talk about rules of inheritance. Um, they talk about the duties of a women of women. And I think this is what I, I was talking about um, at the beginning. That for men, and I gave a talk in London, um, must be six months ago, called um, "Where Is Our Sharia?" And uh, it was a group of uh, of Hindus in London we were talking about and. and we're very aware that Islam has a Sharia. It has, it has several versions of a Sharia, a code of conduct that Muslims are expected to live to, live, live uh, in accordance with. Um, wh what is there for Hindus? What are the rules that Hindus have to follow? Can Hindus drink alcohol? Uh, what are the rules of marriage for them? Well, Hinduism does have a Sharia, and it's there in Dharma Shastras, such as the Manu Smriti, and yet. Um, I had experience of reading out passages to Hindus. I remember very clearly reading out a passage about the ideal of Hindu womanhood in which it says something like, uh, a woman, uh, if a man is badly behaved, uh, immoral, uh, unfaithful, still a wife must regard her husband as a god. 
I remember reading that out to a group of Hindu women and they just laughed. They, you know, it was just, just laughable, the idea is. And I said, well, don't you worship your husband as a god? And again, they just laughed. They thought it, it, it was funny. I, I thought that was very significant because, again, I, I think that the Hindu community consciously or unconsciously has made a judgment that where they find these scriptures to be unacceptable or to have ideas that are unacceptable in the modern era, because there are things in there uh, that are unacceptable. There are even passages where it said people of the lower caste should be excluded from the village. Um, and I, again, I remember reading that passage to a group of Hindus and there was a, a Mrs Patel, which doesn't really identify her, but she said, uh, this is a really wicked book. And I thought, Again, that was absolutely fascinating because there you've got a very, very devout Hindu lady talking about one of her own scriptures and saying, this is a very wicked book. I'm not going to follow it. Why? Because it offends my innate sense of, of, of morality. So I, I would suggest that the, the Hindu community as a whole, consciously or unconsciously, has taken the decision to move away from the structure of society outlined by, by, by the Manu Smriti. And I think this is a, um, a very significant trend that we'll talk about perhaps when we talk about um, Hinduism and, and, and modernity. So in that sense, the Dharma Shastras, um, although historically they may have been significant and relevant, um, for modern Hinduism they are more or less discarded. I, I think very, very few Hindus have ever read them and very, very few Hindus... Um, would regard themselves as being bound by them. And I think that's why it's slightly unfortunate when you read general texts on religion and ethics, the writers very often cite these texts as if this was the Hindu view on the position of women, the Hindu view on caste, because it's not. Today, very, very few Hindus would regard that as, um, as authoritative.